Put down your Gemini 2.5 because Claude 4 is here. They have released Opus 4, the best coding agent on the market, as well as Sonnet 4. In today's video, we're going to run you through what is happening here. Is it any good? And then we'll actually go and test it as well for a little bit of coding and a little bit of writing. So, Claude 4 has been released, best AI agent, and it's a massive release. Obviously, Google I.O. was this week. There was loads of stuff announced then. But this Claude 4 has just been released, and the last time they released a major version was, as you can see here, in early 2024, so well over a year ago. Although we have had advancements since then, 3.5 Sonnet, 3.7, but 4 major release. So, what is the major release? What does it come with, essentially? So, we've brought these two new models in, Opus and Sonnet. For reference, when we look at the models, this is kind of how to, to think of them. So we have intelligence going up here, we have cost here, haiku is like their flash, sonnet is like their standard, and opus is like their pro model. Think of it kind of for ChatGPT like this um, top one is like their reasoning model, but what we'll go into in a moment is both sonnet and opus actually have extended thinking with tool use blended in as well, so they're not divided that way, it's more about power or intelligence as you can see. So, what have they announced in this package essentially? So extended thinking with tool use, which is what I was just talking about, what it means is they can now reason and between reasoning, between thinking, they can then go use a tool. So like, I think it's this, I think it's that. And if you've seen Deep Seek when that first came out, it was like, it would think a bunch and it would bam, give you an answer. And even ChatGPT just a few months ago wouldn't even show you what it was thinking. Whereas now, you have like Claude where it'll think and then it'll go, let me search that, it'll go search on the internet, come back and re uh, or continue its thinking, which is amazing. New model capabilities. So both models can use tools in parallel, which is crazy. Follow instructions more precisely. Um, and when given access to local files, demonstrate significantly improved memory capabilities, extracting and saving key facts to maintain continuity and build tacit knowledge over time. Which kind of goes to this little example here, where they get Claude to play Pokemon, and it starts to just save rules in a navigation guide on its own, which is mental. They also have Claude code gener generally available. So Claude code essentially is like having a software developer in your terminal. Now that has native integration into VS Code and JetBrains. So you can actually use Claude directly in VS Code, which is cool. And then they have some new API capabilities, which if we go to here, I'll open that up, we can have a look. So building better AI agents. So together with Claude, Opus and Sonic 4, these beta features enable developers to build agents that execute code for advanced data analysis, connect to external systems through MCP servers, store and access files across sessions, and maintain context for up to 60 minutes with cost-effective caching. So what is all of this? Well, first they have their code execution tool, which is on the Anthropic API, giving Claude the ability to run Python code in a sandboxed environment. I.e. it gets like its own little virtual environment that it can now use to run code. So it makes it safer for you to actually use it. Now, they also have MCP connector. Now this allows you to connect Claude to any remote MCP server without writing client code. So you used to have to write the code to actually then connect to the server. Whereas now you just natively integrate it. Files API, so you can now store and access documents when building with Claude. It's all simplified. An extended prompt caching, which now instead of having a five minute window for prompt caching, it's now up to one hour. So caching prompts essentially when you write a prompt, it will cache that prompt, which then makes that prompt run cheaper because it pre-remembers it, right? Basically. That memory has gone from five minutes to one hour. So massive improvements there. Now, in regards to benchmarks, we have Opus 4 leading on the software engineer benchmarks, 72.5%, and terminal benchmark, 43.2%. Now, it's interesting here that they actually say leading on because if we go and look here visually, actually, Sonnet 4 leads on the software engineer 
bench verified. But they say Opus is the best coding agent. Well, if we look here at all of the ones that they test it against, we can see that agentic coding, Sonnet wins, but then terminal coding, Opus wins, so that's from terminal bench. We then have graduate level reasoning, uh, Sonnet wins, agentic tool use for retail, Opus, for um, airline, we have Sonnet. For multilingual QA, Opus, visual reasoning, Opus, and high school math, Opus. So I think the way they're getting this, like Opus is the best for coding, is for the difference here, for terminal bench. And that will probably be because of what's powering Cl Claude code, I would imagine. Um, and because of the disparity here versus this, this is automatically better. But it is much more expensive, and we'll get to that in a minute. But we can see here it's uh, comparing it against all the other models. So if we compare it against, say, OpenAI, for agentic coding, they have 55% and 69, and these both have about 80. And for terminal, they're both about 30 OpenAI. Um, and then Claude is up at like 40 and 50. And even if we compare it to like Gemini, again, 25%, 63, 80 and 50. So I mean, it's blowing everybody out of the water. And we'll have a video coming out shortly where we'll test Claude against uh, Gemini. So general model improvements, as I was saying here, that you can remember stuff, which is crazy, make its own little rules. Um, and then Claude Code now generally available, so everyone can kind of use it. Um, and there's new beta extensions for VS Code and JetBrains to use. So now just before we go and give it a try, one side note on context windows and then pricing. So context windows, it has a 200,000 context window. Which sounds a lot until you realize that like Gemini has like a million. So for example, here we come to AI Studio and you can see over here that we have an a million token count. So an easy way to get transcripts from YouTube videos is of course go into the video, go into the description, go down to the transcript, get it up, copy, paste it, right? Nightmare. Instead, what you can do is just share, copy this, come over here, go to AI Studio, go to chat, just paste it in, and then it'll start extracting it and it'll tell you how many tokens. So 260,000 tokens. Um, and you can actually ask questions and stuff about the chat, the YouTube video here, which is super cool. But 260,000 tokens, which means the context of this entire video would not fit within the context of Claude, which is pretty disappointing. Um, especially when you think of it as a coding agent, the amount of context that it ought to understand about code bases it's just not not ideal and then on the pricing side of things Claude 4 API pricing it's well deal so as you can see Claude Opus 4 right $15 per million input tokens or $75 per million output tokens Claude 4 Sonnet is the most cost effective one which is $15 per million output and three dollars per million input. So when you are going to actually leverage these models, if you're going to go state of the art, right? Let me bring this up to go to here. So if you're going to go state of the art, you want the absolute best one ever. You need to recognize how bad that's going to be from a cost and perspective. So if you're going to build stuff, try to if you're going to build it and integrate the LLM into your actual application, so embed it in it consider the pricing if you're going to just use it then it depends you know how many times you want to actually run it and how accurate it needs to be because for example here if we look at something like um the claude uh, sonnet 3.7 or even gemini 2.5 pro the pricing structure here is that i'm sure these are much cheaper than that if we go to ai should we can see so gemini 2.5 we have flash and pro and if we go pro Da, 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 da. We have for more than two hundred thousand tokens, two fifty input, fifteen dollars um, an output, which is actually cheaper, kind of almost the same price. Um, but for less than two hundred thousand tokens, which is the context window, so it's apples to apples, it's um, like almost a third of the price for input and two thirds for output. Or if you want to just go flash preview, it is like so much cheaper. It's not even funny. So consider that when you are going to go and use these models. That maybe you don't need the latest one or the best one. 
Anyway, so let's go and actually test this out. So first here, I have a little Pokemon game, which I um, created just like a one-shot game. Create a 3D Pokemon style game, complete with on-screen graphics for score, etc. I had one error um, just when it was interacting with the environment, and it just seemed to fix that. And here it's here. So it's just like a little 3D world, and I just hit something while Firebolt has appeared. I can then throw the ball, run or attack. So we attack. You can see it takes the health off. And there we go, then we can throw the ball and catch it. And now up here you can see I've caught it, I have three Pokeballs left, and there is um, no more Wild Firebird there. Um, which I thought is a pretty cool random game to just like one shot to see what it's like. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. But before, we're going to go and check writing in a minute, but I'll show you one coding one um, as well. So this 3D car simulator game, this often in Gemini makes a really cool game, and we can... Uh, I suppose let's just test Gemini whilst we're here. So we can paste this in here and we can run it. So it'll make just a single HTML for this uh, 3D car simulator game. Let's do the same inside here. So in Claude, for here, you now have your Opus 4 and Sonnet 4, as well as all your other models. In the searching tools, you can add different tools. So Google Drive, Gmail, Calendar, Web Search. You can enable extended thinking, which is like extended reasoning. Um, and you can use different styles, of course, as well for how you want it to run. And then it gives you some examples if you want to click on these here. So we'll just paste this in. And we'll, um, let me see. Did, so that's Gemini Pro Preview. So that's effectively like extended thinking. So let's enable extended thinking here. And then we'll go to Opus and submit that there. Now, I always notice with Claude, for me personally, that it's really slow. Now, I don't know what it is about it being so slow, if it's because of me or something, but I always find the way that it writes code and stuff like I mean, look at this. Look at it trying to write. Whereas this one, look, boom, it's like pretty much done. It's rapid compared to this here. Um, this is really quite slow, in my opinion. Um, but something cool too is that these agentic coding abilities now for Claude is that it used to be that they would be for like a few minutes at a time for like an agent to run, especially an API. Um, I think up to like 15 minutes, but definitely for like three minutes it was fine. Whereas now it can run for like hours. In the keynote, it ran for seven hours straight. That's crazy. And so if you think about it, like for ChatGPT or something, when it first came out, it was doing tasks which would take a number of minutes and it could do them in seconds. Whereas now it's going to do tasks across hours which, you know, who knows, it could maybe take you days to do, or a team of people to do, um, especially now that it can do tool use in parallel, so it like essentially divide itself up into to working across multiple workers at the same time. But as you can see here, it's pretty slow. So, Gemini, let me see, you should be done, yep, because you're pretty rapid. So we'll download that, and just drag and drop it up here, and boom, here is my runner game. Pretty cool, whoa! Hey, this is actually really quite cool because normally it's uh, not as good as this. The update must have uh, done wonders, but I can still go through stuff. There we go, pretty impressive actually. Um, Claude, we'll see what Claude brings up here and check it out in a minute. In the meantime, let's think of um, something to do with writing as well because the problem I keep finding man with ChatGPT is on ChatGPT, I always it's my go to, right? But it keeps giving me like these annoying responses like i'll let's just pick something so i'll say um i want to reach out to a sponsor please draft me an email the sponsor is raid shadow legends remember that used to be a thing all the time so when you send this in it gives you like such a rubbish response also i feel like it's i was going to say slower than normal but See, I'd love to explore blah blah blah. So, I mean, quick overview, it's not too bad to be fair. Um, so actually, we'll change it to the writing model and give that one a try. Let's send this in. Let's go check Claude in the meantime. Claude's still running, it takes ages. If you know in the comments below why my Claude takes so long, please do let me know because this isn't even because of the extended thinking. Because this is the thinking but This is just the writing but And it should be rapid. And even when I don't have extended thinking, it is this slow. But anyway, chat GPT. Hi, I'm Luke. Oh, 
create a rapidly growing YouTube channel. Maybe try to mess with gameplay dynamic experience. Uh, digital entertainment. Love to collaborate. Compelling integrations that highlight your game's features attentively and effectively. Can we discuss potential opportunities? Blah, blah, blah. Right. So actually that wasn't too bad, but it's still pretty like cold, cold collie. Oh, there we go. There's our game. Boom. Whoa. So, I mean, I must admit, in my opinion right now, Gemini 2.5 is much better. But we'll do a full formal let's test them out, maybe in another video. But just from these here, I think um, Gemini 2.5 looks much better. Um, so anyway, back to the, the writing thing. I want to reach out to a sponsor, blah, blah, blah. So we'll go back over here. And we'll just create a new chat. Paste that in, we'll use Sonnet, that's fine. And for here, extended thinking, sure, let's see. Send that in and see what they say. Um, I think, to be fair, Claude doesn't have as much context about me, personally, but we'll see what it, it writes about. Why collaboration proposal, my metrics and reach. Next steps. Um, I'm gonna get focused on and blah, blah, blah. What if I give them just my YouTube channel? My YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash data look. wonder if I can go and get the information for me. Because I'm sure often like ChatGPT is like, oh, I can't access YouTube. I'm like, why not, mate? But to be fair, even Gemini, I always thought Gemini would be really good at um, getting information from YouTube videos, but not at all. Oh, come on, it's not doing that, man, is it? Does this all the time to me? I always think some this look Barus guy or whatever, man. In any case, because that's not even data. Data look. They've just searched up data look, not at data look. URL. Honestly. And they're supposed to be clever. Because if you just go up here and literally just write in youtube.com forward slash data look. That's me. That's and today's the other look guy. Anyway, as for the writing here, why is partnership with Dot Club proposal? I mean, this is just way too long. Way, way, way too long. Um, so just at a glance, yeah, not super impressed by Claude. I, I mean, it's decent. The fact, like here, for example, right, this when Google Flash first came out, or Google Pro or whatever, two point five first came out, that it created a game like this that worked really quite well. Oh, wait, hey. <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to spin round like that. You're supposed to spin round like not like that either. Well I mean kind of like that but not really. It's supposed to be on railway. Um but yeah, anyway, when Gemini two point five first came out it had done that perfectly this game. And then every time since it never works. So the fact that both of them now works is pretty cool, but still, anyway. So there you go. That's the whole COD 4 announcement. People are super excited about it. Obviously, the tests we've done today are just seeing how it works. But, you know, for the real testing, you want to leverage it, how you're actually going to use it, which might be for vibe coding. Um, but if you're going to vibe code it properly, you maybe need more instructions. I don't know. Because, look, here my car's literally all of them. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Join the free school community. It'll be the first link in the description below. Until next time, I'll see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.